think you have Katty yet? Very well, my son. Again, I place you in the hands of the gods. Yeah. I know what you did last summer. <laughs> ah. Take care of my mother. She needs you. I like Bjorn. He gives amazing speeches too. He's so so strong. He's really fierce. But then he does shit like this. Oh, mother of my children. And it's the fact that he completely forgot about Torvi in order to say bye to Astrid first. Farewell, my children. Take care of your mother. She is deserving of your love. I am less deserving. Still, I love you. I love you all. Okay, let's put aside the Astrid situation and focus on how amazingly epic this looks. <laughs> They're coming! I would be so scared if I saw that many ships coming to my shore. I mean, they're coming for revenge, it's worse. They're here. Who? Who's here? The great heathen army. I like that even they call it the great army. <laughs> and it's all your fault. How is it always fault? You freed Ragnar's son? Who would have told him everything? Who would have told him that we gave Ragnar Lothbrok to King Aelin to be killed? Sometimes, God does things to test us. This has nothing to do with God. This has to do with you. And with me. You were angry with me. Because I'm angry with you. Most of my life you've either manipulated or humiliated me. You use me. Please, tell me. What kind of a father are you? He's got a point. Well, I'm not as good a father as Ragnar Lothbrok was. I saw the love he had for his son. It moved me. It was one of the reasons I decided not to kill his son, not because he was crippled, but because Ragnar loved him. Really? In a way, you've never loved me. You loved our system. Right. You love Ragnar Lothbrok. You love Judith. Right. Not his own son. You love me, father. I think you already know. Do you? Because if you do, I want you to say so. Oh I've said it before, but I it really feel bad for it. <laughs> our reputation as great warriors. I'm not afraid. I don't believe in their reputation. God knows. Yeah. I the sons of Ragnar who have landed on our shores. But I have prepared a very special world for them. They're about to discover they can no longer attack us. The only reason he killed Ragnar was because Ragnar wanted to die. That's the only reason! That one victory made him so overconfident. <laughs> oh. 
to do the tools so that it could overcome the greatest army. I, I actually feel pity. <laughs> he doesn't see all of the no, army. No, he doesn't. Which is why I feel pity. Oh, there's nothing yet. <laughs> oh my god, Flucky! And the music. Oh my gosh! And there's more coming. And all the people they have with them. No. Oh. Let's not smoke anymore now, right? <laughs> Floki's oh always so, so badass when he's about to fight. There's a lot coming. Oh my god. That whole Viking had rock music in that time, though. <laughs> oh <my> Gosh! gosh. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, you're fucked. <laughs> the Great Army. That's over. Oh my god! <laughs> God help us. I don't think he can. Did they fetch the body after? How they fetched it? How did you know that? <laughs> oh, they want your life, dude. We've had to have to go away to the gold and silver. Not be sure, but those you get them. I don't know he knew English. He didn't know either. You made Ragnar suffer, you're gonna suffer too. They all feel it. Way more gruesome when we first saw it. And he's not entering any holy place. He screamed the whole time. Oh. That's the man who thought he knew the peak its ways. He didn't know about the bloody girl. Nope. Oh. You can see that Bjorn is thinking about his father while. Well, oh, they're all thinking about about him. Ivar literally wants to see the life leave his eyes.
This is like the tombstone. They're showing their dad. Well, oh dad. man! <laughs> I don't know if they see you just the feels, but damn, I got goosebumps. They feel it so much. Fjorn is so sad. <sighs> now it's done. Now the guy that made their dad suffer, the guy that tortured Ragnar and killed him, suffered he's gone. just as much, and he's now gone. I gotta say, it's it's harsh. It's it's really hard. To even if he's a bad guy, it's hard to see someone be killed like this, especially when they scream, because you feel bad for them. Like I felt bad for him. I know he was introduced in season one as this really bad king. If you think about it, like he he sent people to die for him, and he didn't really care. He stayed behind. It's always about money and lies and stuff. Even when he knows he's lo he, he lost the battle the first time, he still tried to trick them all. Yeah. He then lost his brother and he swore he would have his revenge, which is understandable. I yeah. Mean, okay. So him killing Ragnar, I don't think, I mean, I didn't feel pity for Ragnar because he decided to be there. It was sad, but he chose to be there and he didn't make a sound. Like, he took it all. Ayla, I mean, we they warned him. So I don't know how to feel. Like I don't know. It's I hate seeing people like suffer and stuff and, and it's no it's not different here. At the same time I can't help but feel like he brought it upon himself. Like I understand that he wanted revenge and stuff, but he still enjoyed making Ragnar suffer and he still made him, you know, hurt way too much. And after that he was warned that the sons were gonna come and, you know, avenge their dad. And he's, he was too overconfident, and that's that's always been his weakness, even in season one, like, always believing that because they are uh, Vikings and they're not Christians, they're below him. Because he's got God on his side, he can't lose, or because he's been told, well, I mean, because he's, he won against Ragnar, because he managed to kill him, uh, the legend is no more, so he's got nothing to fear. That's why he showed up there so confident, which, which is why it... it it's funny, and at the same time, it's not funny, but to see his smile go really down, like, he's like, oh, shit, because it's so charmy. I did not expect that. I expected a lot of men, but not like this. It's the Great Eden Army, so... Oh, gosh. Even the, even the people in England know about the Great Eden Army. They're calling it that. <laughs> so to see Ayla just basically know that he was going to die, like, this, this was over. I felt pity for him. And then after that, the Blood Eagle thing, I think it's fitting for the sons. Like, this man tortured our dad, and they heard it from his own mouth. Like, he said it. Like, they heard him in the wind uh, that, that he suffered a lot, and Odin showed up and stuff, and that was huge for them, and it's their dad. Yeah. To be fair, Ragnar attacked first, but as, as, their, as his son, Details. they wanted revenge, you know? And just seeing Bjorn cry at the end, like, that's... It hurt them a lot. They really, really wanted revenge. And so I, I, I guess going for Blood Eagle is the best they could they could choose. It, it hurts a lot. What was the thing like? It's the worst punishment they can they have? Like the, the, the biggest punishment? I think, yeah. So, and I mean, the thing is, you told me, and I think I remember a little bit, that if you don't make a sound, you get to... Enter Valhalla and stuff. When and you suffered it, uh, the warrior needs to not make a sound, and he's gonna go to a Valhalla if he does. So having Ayla scream the whole time basically proves everyone here that he, be he belittled all the the heathens. He belittled all the the Vikings from day one, but in the end, he's not as strong, and he's not. He wasn't capable of holding it in like Ragnar did when he died, or even when the Earl that they killed with the Bloody, bloody Eagle technique a few seasons ago. Earl Jackson. Thank you. When he died too, he didn't make a sound either. They're really strong and they have a lot of courage. Uh, Y'all bored. What is bored, there you go. Y'all bored. So he didn't make a sound either, so I'm like, you always, you know, you spin on them and you belittle them and you see yourself as this 
person that's whole, so much better than all of these guys and then you suffer the things they suffer too and, and you can't even hold a candle to them yeah, you, can't, you can compare if we say it in a Christian way they're like the martyr who suffered through really uh, hardcore punishment to join heaven after that basically it's like a necessity almost yeah having to suffer to a certain point in order to merit your way your place in the holy place depending i mean if you if you've done a lot of bad things in your life i mean it's like it's your punishment sort of but if you take it like a man and you like don't make a sound because you deserve you deserve that punishment you get to be pardoned it's not like the christians like the, it's a huge difference because i some people not some people but i know that some people think that uh it's it's crazy in the in when you're a christian you can do basically whatever you want as soon as if you confess before your death you're going to be pardoned and go go to heaven anyway like you don't have to pay for what you did because god forgives all and stuff like that so if you just confess like there was this joke i don't even remember in which show it was but there was this joke about a really bad guy who was christian and stuff and he, he was about to die and he knew it he was about to get shot and uh he did really bad things so right before he got shot he was like i confess all my crimes so he shot he ended up in heaven <laughs> yes <laughs> stuff like that but the vikings i think it's 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 something else like you really if you do bad things and you I think enough I'm, to deserve that i should probably read more about it but maybe maybe all humans we need to do to go through purgatory before going to heaven maybe i don't know like i'm not i'm not religious so my family is our family is but i i've never really been into this so i i don't know everything and i don't remember what i've been told when i was younger so there's that but and with the vikings i just don't don't know much but i feel like this is what i take from the show like from someone who has no knowledge of the vikings this is what i see with this punishment it's like when you are when you believe in their gods when you are when you're following their religion if you do bad things it's not enough to just confess if you've done if you've done really bad things you have to pay for it and if you can stand the punishment then you deserve the forgiveness Ragnar maybe was suffering because he was, you know, getting his own forgiveness for everything he's done. He has killed, you know, he's been, he invaded England. He's the one that caused all this wreck. To be honest, I think that him not making a sound when he died was his way of showing that he was taking the punishment because he, he acknowledged that he made mistakes and, and what well, there basically, you go. we know that after that he went to Valhalla. Oh, we know so. he did go to Valhalla. I don't think Ayla is going anywhere, sadly. <laughs> um, the only thing I can say with him is I told we, we kind of told you so. Everyone told you so. They warned you. Now we're on to Egbert. And Egbert, too, like this episode. I think I his, told his, you that he was. He seemed defeated, like he didn't want he's to He's older, anymore. right? He seems really old and. and I know he's old, like he was, he looked older than Ragnar when they met, and even Ragnar looked old, but like other people like Rolo, they age too, Floki, he aged as well, they don't look that old, you know? So I think that's the physical, uh, burden, it's, it's the burden they've been carrying and it's, it physically shows that they are tired, and now he's also lost Ragnar, so maybe he feels lost. He's got one last thing to do, so I wonder if, if. We're gonna see it this season, maybe. Give the crown to Eto Wolf. Oh, this, dad, this that guy. That was so sad. Yeah. Dad, to know that your own father loved Ragnar, a pagan who doesn't live your way of life, Atlasnan, a holy man who basically fudged your wife and fudged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And had an old bastard son. And. Yeah, Ella, and Judith, who Judith betrayed, yeah. his daughter-in-law, the wife of his son. And to be fair, like they're very Christian in this family. Like both Ethelwolf Ethel and uh, Egbert, they really, really, really believe in God and stuff. And so, whenever uh, he had to convince Ethelwolf to uh, forgive your wife or adopt uh, the bastard son and stuff, that's what the Lord would that's ask what the Lord do. would say. And then after that, he turns around and he's like, "Oh, I loved uh, Ragnar, who's not a Christian, more than you." And I'm like. I love you're, Judith, who is not my wife, but and your he's, wife. And he's sinned too. Like she sinned. Like she's technically not the perfect Christian either. And Ethelwolf is just 
What he's like, you follow the rules when it comes to me. Like you force me to follow the rules, but everyone else can just go fuck it, fuck it. They can say fuck it, and you're you're gonna love him more than me. He's always been following the rules, and I feel bad for him. I didn't like him before, but I've said it's been a couple of seasons now that I've I've been saying that Ate the Wolves. E e he's but just after his, his we're dad's saying love, him you know. Taking it all episode after episode. Yeah. So man, stop taking the bullshit from your old man. Do something. Uh, I, I, I know it's hard, and I really wish for him to just receive what is what is haunts to him. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I feel like maybe if Eckbert dies and he becomes king, uh, Judith will not stay. I have oh, a feeling. I, I wish that he just sent her away. <laughs> Cause uh, I mean, the only reason he's not doing anything. I mean, there's the the idea of God wanted it to happen and stuff, but it's also because his dad forbid it. So his dad is protecting Judith. So I have a feeling that, you know, Egbert is saying he trusts his son, but I feel like him not even saying he, he loved his he loved Ethelwolf will lead Ethelwolf to maybe rebel. I don't know what's gonna happen if Egbert does die uh, and what Ethel will do with Judith. But if he does something like setting her away or maybe just killing her for her sins, she's gonna have a wake up call, a really harsh wake up call. I'm actually, well, I mean, I thought the battle with uh, Ayla was going to happen maybe in the last episode of this season because of the thumbnails and the titles and stuff. But since it happened this episode, I'm guessing the last battle of the season will be against Egbert. I think so. Or at least, I mean, some, and then they're on their way to fighting Egbert and stuff. That's, that's where we'll end the season. So I wonder if maybe the season ends with Egbert dying too. We'll see. I yeah. don't know. I don't know about that. But it was a good episode. So farewell, King Ayla. And uh, you were you were nice when you were there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you. I mean, he was he was cool to see. Like he great acting, by the way. Him dying and stuff, and him j just before that when they brought him to the hole, the acting was amazing. Really felt. I really felt it. That's why maybe I was. I felt pity for him. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this episode with us. If you want to see the next one right away, it's already on Patreon. The link is in the description. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to watch it now. And if not, for the next one to be out on YouTube, guys. So we're going to see you soon. Yeah. Bye, Bye. guys.